Welcome to BNC Live. I'm Tishani Whitlow. A paraplegic man from Ohio has filed a complaint with the NAACP against the Dayton, Ohio Police Department after video evidence shows him being dragged out of his car by his arms and his dreadlocks during a traffic stop. This is the body cam video of that incident. It happened on September 30th. Dayton police say officers stopped Clifford Owens B after he was seen leaving a suspected drug house. They say because of Owen B, Owen B's past drug and weapons history, uh, they decided to pull him over to search his car for drugs. Police say when they asked him to exit his vehicle, he refused. And that's when the officers pulled him out of the car. Now in the video, Owens B can be seen telling the officers, this is before this exchange you're watching right now, that he was paralyzed. Owens B was charged with obstructing official business and arresting arrest, resisting arrest. Joining me now is attorney Andrew Lieb. Uh, Andrew, uh, Attorney Lieb, excuse me, welcome to BNC Live. It's always good to have you. Owens B, who is a paraplegic, is accusing the Dayton police of profiling and unlawful arrest after the incident. The president of Dayton uh, Fraternal Order says the officer's actions were warranted because he did not comply when asked to exit the vehicle. I mean, our, talk about the law. I mean, I'm just still honestly flabbergasted by that video. Are, are there any legal Shawnee, grounds there? You said it right, flabbergasted. That's kind of how I feel right now. Um, it's just disgusting. And it's disgusting because this guy clearly couldn't use his legs. He couldn't exit the vehicle. And there's a lot of laws there. Let's start off with the most basic. The Fourth Amendment guarantees, guarantees people the right to not have police use excessive force. Sounds excessive to me to drag someone out of the car. Let's go a step further and say that the Department of Justice even explains to police officers with an FAQ on their website how to respect rights for disabled people. This is a disabled gentleman. This, and I, I want to say, that doesn't excuse his drugs. That doesn't excuse his felony prior conviction. It just, it's wrong. You shouldn't drag someone out of a car. Attorney Lee, does the burden of proof fall on... Um the person being pulled over by police when they say, hey, I'm handicapped, this is my handicap, or does it really just boil down to an officer uh, being sensitive to what this person's saying? Where is that fine line drawn? It's all about whether it's readily apparent. So if it's readily apparent, then you could see it. Like if someone is in a specialized vehicle, you know how some of them have the hand devices on them for someone who couldn't drive with their feet. If it's readily apparent, it's on the officer. If it's not readily apparent, it's on the person getting pulled over. Excessive force is analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis. So yes, if the guy said nothing, if the guy did nothing, yes, police officers have to protect themselves. And I wanna point that out, I wanna make that very clear that we don't want police officers to be in danger. But when a guy says, I can't walk, I can't use my legs, I can't, there's there's footage. You gotta, you gotta listen to the guy. So what, okay, so in this situation, we're looking at the vehicle. It's not apparent that this is a modified vehicle. Um, so what type of proof should someone who was disabled show if they were in a similar situation as this gentleman we see here? I don't want to go to proof. He said, I'm a paraplegic. That's enough for me. You're a paraplegic. The officer should have said, well, then can we assist you? They shouldn't have dragged him out. It shouldn't have been in that vein. That's 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 just wrong. And I want you to know, I imagine he's going to sue them. And I think he's going to sue them. There's cases all over the charts about this, whether they're, it's, it's called the 1983 case or a Ohio-based case we could have, or back to the excessive force. Because Police have to protect themselves. Police need to patrol. Police have a very hard burden. But when someone says they're a paraplegic, that's enough for them to be able to say, we don't need the same typical force we need. We need to treat you as someone with a disability. In this heightened environment that we're currently in, Attorney Lee, um, does this boil down to just more training on the department, on the officer? How do we rectify this situation to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else moving forward? Tashani, it's so important that we have trainings, but there's two things I need to say about trainings. Number one, 
Kamala Harris is the, was the first attorney general in the United States back in 2015 to have police officers get training. That's important. The first thing I want to say about trainings, though, is trainings can't be limited to sex discrimination or race discrimination. You'll find in discrimination law, disability is the most complained about discrimination out there, number one. Number two, public health people tell us you can't tell a police officer, don't do this, you're wrong. Because that, not just police, anyone who's trained, we have to make them into allies and say, here's how you need to help other police that are doing the wrong way to make a change. It's the verbiage. You can't attack someone being trained. We need to get the trainings right by the right training people. Because overall, I'm sure the police didn't want to hurt someone. It was a tense situation, and that's what happens. Attorney Lieb, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, sir. Great insight. And switching gears to tech.